are six countries that share the Guyana Chilica region. In alphabetical order, there are Brazil, Colombia, French Guiana, Guyana, Suriname, and Venezuela. The three Guyanas, Guyana, French Guiana, and Suriname, have the entire territory within the Guyana Shield. While Brazil, uh, Venezuela, and Colombia have only part of their, their state within the Guyana Shield. It is the most intact tropical rainforest area left on planet Earth. Ewakrama represents what is called a protected area that, that allows sustainable use. Why sustainable use is important for Ewakrama is that Guyana is a poor country. We are very rich in natural resources and we have to utilize to make money. So Ewakrama can serve as a demonstration and a model for how to utilize in the best way. The Ewakrama model is basically about how you could use a forest without losing it. And, and we aim to show that forests are actually worth uh, more alive than dead. And this is the whole thing with climate change, because if you look at the global emissions of greenhouse gases, it is estimated that deforestation contributes to about 20% of the annual global emissions. In 1989, the late former president, Desmond Hoyt, made this offer of this space of 1 million acres or 371,000 hectares of tropical intact rainforest to a Commonwealth meeting in Malaysia. In, 19, in 1996, the late President Chedi Jagan signed the Iwakrama Act, which officially created this place as the Iwakrama Center for Rainforest Conservation and Development. Iwakrama has an MOU, a Memorandum of Understanding, with the Commonwealth. So it's known as a Commonwealth program. It's international, mm -hmm. we're autonomous, we're, you know, we, we're, we're a research institution, but also development institution, so we also do business. In fact, the streams of business that we have now include sustainable timber, tourism, sustainable ecotourism, but we also have a training business line, and the training and research is where universities from all over the world actually come to visit Iwakrama. We look for these indicator species and that gives us an idea of the ecological health of the rivers. On the roads also we do road patrols um, and we also have a set of um, wildlife that we observe on the road, all the wildlife on the road we observe, so counts things like and we take observe. counts, numbers, um, and we file that and we put it in a database and then we can analyze that over time to see how, how, how things change, how the vary, how seasons, we also collect weather data, climate data. We have a history of data collection and so we could look at that over time to see if some things are increasing or some things are decreasing or a particular species is not present as much as it is or they are getting more and that is all indication of the health, the environmental health, okay. the ecological health of the place. For example, um, in Iwakrama, it is said that we have, I think, the highest density of fish diversity mm -hmm. in the world. I think it is of over 400 species of fish in the freshwater. You have to have the right permits in order to come here and do research, right? I mean, not just we're 
open invitation to the world, mm. but you have to get the requisite permits mm. and all of these things, and that goes through the ministry and through your Kramer's legislative body and all of that before you can actually come and do research. And that is basically to protect yes. yeah. the, 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 in, the intellectual property of the place, really. receive a lot of uh, bird watchers coming from North America, England, and also people that just want to relax and experience this part, this beautiful part of Guyana. We have a canopy walkway, which is a major attraction. Mind you, this is the only canopy walkway in the Guyana, so you won't find it in Suriname or French Guyana. So that too is something that we will further develop, further do marketing, sales, so that more people can get to know of this product so that more people will get to experience it and take home with them the positive message about tourism being done in a very sustainable way. It's a model, but not only for Guyana, it's a model for the world. How to conserve nature, but at the same time, to use nature in a very sustainable way. In other words, having tourism, yes, but you have to take into account the carrying capacity. So you know exactly how many people to have at one time, so as not to damage nature or wildlife. And of course, in our case, getting communities involved. If you have a good look at our staff, you will see that most of our staff members are from local communities. So it's all about ecotourism, using nature, but at the same time, communities, local communities are benefiting from our presence here. And while many people see roads as being challenging and bringing challenges, and you do have negative impacts with roads, one of the leaders from the area um, from Tsurama village, he, he, he made a statement which I think is very powerful and he said the road is here Let us use the road and not let the road use us. The road This road you came through the road was now upgraded That same year the government of Guyana through Commonwealth gave Iowa Kramer that concession that the concession Iokram, the government gave that land for Iokram. And we used to hunt, we used to collect medicines, we used to farm, we used to fish and everything in there. So we said government give give part of our land and one village can't represent everybody. Right, so we said, let us all come together, one voice, all the villages, one voice. So we came with NRDDB. So all the leaders come here, make decisions so that we can talk to Ayokram. We can bargain for good, we can bargain for, you know, negotiations. We have revised the agreement. From time to time we revise the agreement, we check and see what works or what didn't work. Right? But I think all in all we have benefited from because we had uh, true Iokrama, we had finance uh, management training, we had management training, record keeping training, tourism, ecotourism training, you know, forestry, uh, forestry training. So we have had all those tra tra um, trainings through Iowa Kramer. All the workers, tour guides, tour guides and rangers, all from North Tripoli. But that's, that's the agreement. Every tourist that sleeps at Iowa Kramer, we get a percentage.
the idea behind the Guyana Shield facility is to help the countries that share this unique ecoregion, help those countries to advance their conservation priorities in each country that, have, that is participating, and then to look for opportunities to bring the countries together into some framework of cooperation to address those environmental issues that are transboundary in nature. COBRA is assisting in, you know, thinking with the people, working with them and help them identify these challenges. And not, not only identifying it, but to come up with solutions to it. You know, find a problem and look for ways to make it better, make things, make a difference in the communities, locally I'm speaking about. We would organize um, community meetings and when we go there, we would meet with the general public and explore how we can look at how healthy their community is in look from many angles, socially, you know, ecologically and everything else. And then we develop a short video on that uh, with the approval of the community. You know, we had to go back several times to say and show the community that this is the material we're putting together if it, it's correct and if there's anything that need, they need to ask and that is the approach that COBRA is using. It's participatory. It's, it's, it's a tool that we use that we include everybody within the community and even in the North Rukmini. If there is something that we want to do, we want to be open that this is what's happening and then we look for opinions, we get feedback and so on. So COBRA approach is very participatory. And the, and, and the method we are using is uh, photography, you know, cameras, videos, photo stories, and so on. We recognize that while it is important to work with governments, it's also important to work with communities, since the communities are living in the forest, and they practice traditional lifestyles, and they are the first strokes of the forest and the other ecosystems. And so our approach is not just to work with governments, but also work with communities. For example, in Guyana, we are supporting a project through the Guyana Forestry Commission called Monitoring, Reporting, Verification System for Red Plus. That's a national initiative. At the same time, we are working with the, the North Rupununi District Development Board in Anai Village to develop a community-based monitoring, reporting, and verification system for Red Plus. And then we would bring these two together. So you have the national MRVS for Red Plus, and you have the community MRVS for Red Plus. And we will find where they can be linked so that we can have a common approach. Eocram is linked to the Guyana Shield facility. Since 2007, during the second phase of the Guyana Shield initiative, UNDP, working together with IUC and Netherlands Committee, identified Eocram as one field site to test a monitoring protocol that could be used in a payment for ecosystem services scheme. And we monitored indicators for three ecosystem services, biodiversity, freshwater, and carbon sequestration. And we worked with the Okramas management to develop the monitoring protocols for payment for ecosystem services, as well as we worked with the communities that are associated with the Iwakrama through the North Rupununi District Development Board to develop what we call approaches to sharing benefits. For example, if Iwakrama can market the services that the forest provide, 
let's say, Forest Carbon Services, and they receive monies for that, then they have a system in place to share those benefits with the communities. And so we worked with Iwakrama and the communities and their leadership to find out what is the best way to share those benefits with communities. The government of Guyana and the Kingdom of Norway had a very innovative agreement in 2008. And, um, and it's ironic because that agreement was actually signed in the Iwakrama forest. So we were very much even from the inception. And uh, my understanding is it's really the very first bilateral agreement for ecosystem services um, uh, between uh, two nations. Um, of course, inherent in that were a number of challenges. Um, uh, one of the big challenges out of that was the development of what they call a, a, an MRV, which is Monitoring, Reporting, and Verification System. Again, Guyana is one of the first nations in the world to develop such a program. It's very well advanced, um, approaching completion because an MRV is an integral part of ecosystem services payments and Red Plus payments. You really have to show that you've kept uh, your deforestation rate at a certain uh, percentage in order to qualify for payments. For us, that's not a model that's sustainable because you really have to ask yourselves that, you know, will these payments for Red Plus, will they come every year forever? And I don't think anyone can actually guarantee that they will pay you every year and if for some reason uh, those payments stop, uh, you would not, you would have killed your industries, you would have killed your, your mining industry, you would have killed your timber industry, and then all of a sudden Red Plus payments stop. I mean, you, and you hear the commitment, you know, we're supposed to have an international Red Agreement by 2015. Chances are that's not going to happen. So, you know, so when you look at the international Red Plus market, you know, many of the nations talk about Red Plus. You know, but there's a difference between talking and providing a check. Because remember, most of the forested nations on Earth are really in the, in the developing nations. And those nations actually need money. You know, for example, Guyana needs infrastructure. We need health facilities. We need education. We need roads. We need telecoms. We need electricity. Um, and we have uh, close to 90% of our country that's under forest cover. You know, obviously those demands are going to put a strain on any government in any nation to provide these kinds of services. The, they don't earn money if they don't protect the forest. Okay, okay. a certain percentage of the forest has to remain. And so far they've earned over 100 million in return mm -hmm. by keeping the forest. The idea of Red Plus as a way to reduce emissions of, of carbon to the atmosphere was discussed and agreed at the United Nations Framework Convention um, on Climate Change meeting in Bali in 2007. And since then, Guyana developed the, the Low Carbon Development Strategy and entered into a bilateral agreement with the Kingdom of Norway to basically test how Red Plus could work. And, and that has been progressing very well. Ghana and Norway together have provided very important lessons for the rest of the world to follow. Ghana is at the center of the Ghana Shield, when you really look at the map of the Ghana Shield, and is providing important leadership for the rest of the Ghana Shield and other countries around the world. Guyana has realized that uh, saving the biodiversity of their country is important. Mm. Um, therefore, uh, I think they are cleverly opening up to knowing how they can do it sustainably. Mm. Okay. Because extractive industry goal will finish one time. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> then what remains behind? So, you know, they are thinking about that. So they don't want just to go for the goal, cut all the trees, and then tomorrow what?